Hi, welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel, and we're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. Tonight I have with me two gentlemen representing Bridgetown, Zach Clark, the Director of Environments at Bridgetown, Inc., and Marshall Snyder, the Founder and Director of Bridgetown. Welcome. Thanks for thank having you. us. Thank yes, you thank you for Great being be here. here. So, Marshall, I'm going to start with you. You are the founder. Mm -hmm. what, um, tell me a little bit, if you would, about Bridgetown, what it is you do, maybe what your mission is, and why you decided to, found, uh, to start this organization. Um, well, Bridgetown's, the mission is loving people because people matter. That's, that's, that's our mission. Simple and, yeah. and, and that's simple and easy to remember. That's the why. Okay. So um, our what and how is we create uh, relational environments or platforms or like the church would call them ministries or whatever that um, provide relief, uh, mobilization, and transformation. And uh, so those are our three things that we do and each of those three things have or three uh, deals have different environments or programs in them so like um, our relief thing has night strike and b town kids um, mobilization is we mobilize groups and individuals into the inner city core and um, to practice generosity just to be generous people um, and then we have our transformation aspects which is a couple things beyond the bridge lift one and then a transformation trip 2.0 um, kind of deal. So, you know, as far as how it started, um, I, obviously, I, I, well, I was a minister for 15 years. Oh, okay. And so um, I came up to Portland, and a, a church actually brought me on and said, hey, we'll pay your salary to do whatever you want for three years. That was really the interview. Really? Yeah, it was quite the interview. Wow. And so... Heck of a deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So through that through that interview, I just I came on and and uh, just through a series of events and and different things going on and just a you know a real core of my faith and uh, mm -hmm. being that um, uh, just felt directed to do a, a couple of things and one of them was um, uh, the thing called Night Strike the or the part of our organization that tends to get a lot of attention and notoriety which is called Night Strike and at uh, Ankeny Square. Um, I just had a, honestly, I just had an impression that I was supposed to wash feet right here at this place. Really? So I grabbed a folding chair and a blue, like a basin, and I folded this chair out, and um, I was really hoping someone like you would come by and I could wash your feet, you know, but really, um, it was just a time of change in my world that I would, you know, uh, so a guy came by and asked me if he could wash his feet, and he happened to be a, 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 a gentleman who found himself without a home at that, at that mm -hmm. time of his life, and he was struggling with addictions and different things. And so um, he said I could wash his feet. I sat him down, pulled his socks off and his shoes, or shock, shoes and socks off and put his feet in some hot water, asked him if, just asked me if I could pray for him. That's basically what it was, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how it birthed. And wow. it was just a labor of, of um, reflection of what's going on inside of my life and, and with uh, my faith, my relationship with my faith. And, and so um, it just kind of took off from there. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the story goes on and on right, and on. Right, right. So. so do you still wash feet? I, uh, me personally? Yeah. Uh, and, and the others involved in Bridgetown. Well, it's it's a bit bigger now. Um, I, I know. Yeah. I know. It's I know it's a whole lot more than that. But just out of yeah. curiosity, I don't get to because one of the I don't I, I really don't get to because there are you know 250 volunteers that come down and we provide the platform for generosity to be there. So I would say that my role now is providing the platform. So my role as executive director is to raise funding and keep the platform going so feet can continue to be washed. So yes, I yeah. do still wash yeah. feet. I just don't Maybe get to get directly, and not as directly. Right. Um, and so it uh, it's gone way beyond that now. And so it sounds to me like Bridgetown is the kind of organization that provides as much for the volunteers as it does for the people that you're helping, because it's, you're providing them the opportunity to be generous. It's absolutely, so we call that a double mobilization. Okay, that our our guests. Um, they, mo they mobilize us. They don't even maybe realize that they're mobilizing us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, us people that, quote unquote, have homes or us people mm -hmm. that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so you, we get mobilized and they mobilize us. And so we get to come down and, and just love on people. And so it's two worlds that collide and they find out that there's a lot in common. There's stories that are in common. The stories are being told around the table. There's just these these great things that happen and so it's a pretty it's a it is a great environment it really is it's the homeless community your main focus 
I know you work with kids. Is that, is that the... Um, you know, Bridgetown itself is not a homeless organization. I mean, we, we're a people organization. So we see the mobilization of our volunteers just as important as the mobilization of our guests. Right. Or the, and and yeah. I, I sense that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, we, see, we see people who find themselves without homes at this point there. And we, but we also see the marginal. We see those in recovery. Mm -hmm. We see those that are in the, the missions. And we see those that are um, obviously living in a doorway and those that are living in apartment complexes and different things like that as well. Wow. Oh. Now, Zach, you are the uh, Director of Environments. Yeah, That's sure. an interesting title. I kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, that must encompass quite a bit. What, is, what exactly do you do for it Bridgetown? It does. Um, so, essentially, I, I direct all the, uh, the individual programs. So, the Night Strike, our B-Town Kids environment, and the, um, and the transformation trips that we, that we okay. offer. Okay. Um, and so, each one of those um, has its own leader, and I oversee that and provide direction and resource for them. So you're the big scary boss, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling you're not very scary. No, no. He looks it though. Oh yeah. Well, you 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 could be a bouncer yeah. in a, you know, you know, at a bar, but I, I have a feeling. We have a great point, story yeah. about that. We have to tell you sometime oh, so. th later. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have a few pictures too, so maybe we can bring those up okay. and, and you can tell us what we're looking at. But. Um, sure thing. How long have you been there? Uh, now, uh, now a year and a half. A year and a half. It'll be two years in June. So. Oh. So. The um, B Town kids. That's a, well. Let's let's look at this here. This is okay. So uh, what we have here on the uh, on the right side, um, that's our logo, of course, uh, Bridgetown. And again, our motto is uh, loving people because people matter. Yeah, that's a great uh, motto. Simply I like just that. it's I like just that. what we're yeah. about. It's really simple. It does kind of say it all, doesn't it? It yeah. says it all, and uh, and that's what we um, aim to live out. And then on the uh, the group of kids there, they're on a transformation trip, and so these are the the uh, the organizations, the youth organizations that come in to learn how to love a city, love and serve a city. And those are our transformation trips. Now they uh, are put into learning environments um, all throughout the city, uh, where they learn. To, um, to, to develop that thought on how, how to effectively love a city and how to serve wow. in that area, um, to be cast back into their communities and hopefully replicate that okay. same thought. I'm, I'm going to probably ask you a little bit more about sure. that later, sure. but tell me what we're looking at here. I <laughs> love that picture there on the right. <laughs> Looks like we have a little bit of uh, B-Town kids right there. So uh, as part of the... Part of the day, we let the kids just be kids. We do face painting, we blow bubbles, we play soccer, uh, we cook hot dogs and hamburgers. We just hang out and love on people. It is a blast. It is so much fun. That's it what I. Like fun. That's, what, that's what we do with our summers every Saturday. Yeah. That's where we are. We're we're in various sites throughout the city, just loving on our kids. Yeah, it's we a have blast. trucks and the sides fold down into stages. Oh, really? And there's sound system well, and everything in there, and so we're improvisational uh, theater or well, uh, music or whatever. well, we actually do a program. So oh, we you actually do, oh, do okay. an asset based development oh. curriculum with them. Oh, so so it's, it's, very, it's very structured then. There's a very structured yeah. um, part to it. There's a real, uh, I, the, the focus of it being um, helping children to know that they're an asset into their community right. as well as the assets that are available to them in their community. That's, right. That's right. A, and point. then uh, in that one, again, we have some, some face painting. Uh, we have uh, our Night Strike event uh, right there in the middle. And then um, uh, with the transformation trips, we have people, we mobilize people into service um, as, as one of the things they do. And so this is a service, picture of a service project um, that, right. that this group is doing. So. Um, just <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, we just recently uh, rolled out a mobile bike repair unit. And oh, so every week, um, yeah. every week we are repairing um, our guest bikes uh, to to keep them mobile, uh, doing some doing some maintenance and stuff like that. Um, but as much as it's for the guests, again, uh, our volunteers uh, needed a platform to to, sure. you know, he was a, this is Mike. He was an old bike mechanic, and uh, now he runs a warehouse. But he needed an outlet for uh, serving and loving others, and he has just fueled this and taken it. Is amazing. It's an amazing story, and we're loving doing that. And then also our our uh, our food line. Uh, we have mm. cook teams uh, that make amazing meals. Uh, we we don't throw together anything with half effort. Everything is um, full on the, the freshly, kinds of meals that we made that day. The meals oh, that we right. would serve our families. Right. It is one Good. of my favorite places to eat. It's amazing. Um, side of our trailer with our logo on it and, uh, and Night Strike. And, and that's a picture of, uh, of the mix um, in that you're seeing both volunteers, you're seeing guests, and you're seeing lives collide um, in what, just where this. Where is this? What, where this is, is underneath the Burnside Bridge. So if you've okay. ever been to the Saturday Market, mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. a portion of it that's under, so uh, underneath the, the Burnside. Side. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's underneath the Burnside Bridge there. Now I have to up. say on that, that the city of Portland was instrumental in us getting that site. Absolutely. We did a good neighbor agreement with them. 
Um, we worked with them. We have a great relationship with the Portland police, the, the park rangers. The city was really great in, in helping us um, get that site. I'm sure that's instrumental in helping you to succeed in your mission. Well, to totally. have those kind of relationships. Yeah, we have a permit. We have a permit, yeah. and we have to do all those things just like anyone else does. And our kitchen is a, is a certified kitchen with Multnomah County. We're right. inspected, and mm -hmm. so we're a mobile kitchen, and we do all the things that any group ha would have to do in order to have the event down there. So it's, we, have a, we have to rent a porta potty just like right. any, any event does. Mm -hmm. and so it's really cool. Um, yeah, it that is, way. that's great. So tell me a little bit more about Night Strike. Now that's, okay. uh, it's people just meeting under the um, Burnside Bridge. It's people, your volunteers, your guests are people that are living in the community. Yeah. And what do you do? You feed them, you um, talk with them, you just, build relationships? Yeah, we provide several different... Fix our bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Fix our bikes. Well, we provide lots of uh, resources, um, things like, yeah, there's uh, food. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we have about 200 to 250, sometimes 300 volunteers That's that come lot. every Thursday night. That's a lot. And yeah. so we That's mobilize them both under the bridge, but also in the city. So it's not just in the bridge. We go okay. out into the city where people are already um, camped out for the evening or have chosen a spot for the evening. Uh, we'll go to them and we'll provide um, things like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, socks, and coffee. So we actually go out and send about 100 people out that way. Um, so people, if people want to donate, what are the kinds of things that, that you would need? I mean, I, mean, I assume yeah. you would take donations besides money, which is always helpful to any organization. Sure. But what kinds of things would... We have some high-use items, um, uh, things like our coffee, mm -hmm. um, peanut butter and jelly, socks. Socks, socks. are gold. Um, uh, socks, peanut butter and jelly, uh, coffee, and... Uh, yeah, that's it. yeah. Sleeping bags, jackets, mm -hmm. blankets, mm -hmm. these sure. kinds of things, okay. uh, things that that wear hard. You know, of course, right. you know, right. you know right. slacks and things like that aren't necessarily. Well, and then the other thing that. is, we just started. We put it on Facebook. Um, uh, bike parts. Oh yes. Oh. So like if people yes. have bikes laying around that they're not using, we'll take those bikes apart and recycle the parts and use those to fix the. See, that's such and, an easy thing well, to do. Well, and the thing is, is that you forget that you know just because they ride their bike that, that that's their only form of transportation right. and so if their bike breaks down they can't get to work if they can't get to work they can't necessarily sustain themselves so if we can help with some of those basic mm -hmm. items that's a huge deal for them sure. so sometimes even people that I have three bikes sitting around that are just kind of parted out yeah let us know we'll that's you know, great yeah. and people that would probably be happy to get them out of their yeah, garage absolutely. or whatever kind of scared to say that because I'm thinking no my garage will be a bike <laughs> <junkyard. laughs> that'd be your garage yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Right. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your volunteers. I don't know who wants to address this, but um, you said 250 to 300 volunteers sometimes. Yeah. How many active volunteers do you think you have, or is it, is it a, a fluid number that's always changing? Well, last year we saw, with guests and volunteers, we saw over 38,000 people come through our organization, through everything we do. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see about 500 students come through the transformation trips from all over the U.S., um, they oh. come from all over the place. Um, just to come here? Just to come to Portland, right? And so then we also have, through our night strike, we see about 250 to 300 volunteers. So you have about 46 night strikes a year mm -hmm. that we do. So I think we're at like the 12, I think it's 12,000 volunteers, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken wow. on the numbers. And then the B-Town Kids part of things, we have a number of sites. You know, we, have, we did one in Gresham this year. We do two in, two in North Portland. We're launching one this year in Park Rose and then another one in Beaverton. And so we'll see, you know, a couple hundred kids in mm -hmm. that and then volunteers through that as well. So our volunteers come from all walks. So we have uh, we have a large majority of, of faith based people that come to that, obviously. But but we don't that's not our I mean, we're not pushing that. We're right. just saying, hey, come and be generous because people can be generous. Yeah. And people Absolutely. of any faith or no faith can, can be generous. Be generous. Yeah. You see it all the time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So if some were, someone were interested in volunteering, could they volunteer as little or as much as they wanted to? Yeah. Because it sounds like you have enough stuff going on. Yeah. Somebody could a, maybe come and volunteer every week or they could volunteer mm -hmm. two times a year. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. And a good entry point into night is our night strike. That's right. Um, uh, where you can go and be a, a part of the broad base of volunteers. And that's every Thursday night. Yeah. yeah. How, how are those volunteers prepared for what you do? Uh, we spend, uh, from, from the time we get them, we spend uh, time talking about, it's an hour. So they get there at 7, our orientation is at 7.20. Uh, that's when we start that portion. 7.20 to... Uh, 
to eight o'clock, we've gone over um, safety, safety guidelines, rules to live by kind of stuff under the bridge. And then we divide them out into their individual jobs that they'll be doing. So uh, whether that's washing feet, oh, okay. washing feet, Good. that's, you know, that's, uh, you know, trash things, the food, the cutting hair, Everything. if you're a hair cutter, all kinds of things. Popcorn uh, and, maker. And, and, yeah. I can and do that. In that yes. <laughs> and in that, uh, each one of those um, uh, jobs gets an individual orientation. Okay. Uh, where the Maybe particulars of the before. job. Yeah. Right. Health, health. You know, for food, you would talk about health right. uh, things and, and how they serve, how we how we move the line along. That we have kind about of stuff. thirty staff that oversee that part, oh, okay. and That's they right. they orientate. And they're highly trained. They go. They've gone through a cohort of training, so they've been doing night strike for a long time. So. It sounds yeah. like you're a very organized organization. <laughs> well, organized yeah. chaos. Is, is it organized of, well, chaos? It all looks that. great on paper and everything works and then you add people. And then, it's, and it then becomes, it's, because people are dynamic. They're right. not static and that's awesome. And yeah, so it keeps it from being boring, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, in both it. ends, we like whether it. it be the guests or the, even the people that come, sometimes the volunteers are just as cantankerous as some of our guests. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. To. <laughs> Tell me, do either of you have any uh, stories that you could share, any anecdotal stories about somebody who um, has either volunteered or um, been a guest of your organization mm -hmm. and, and how they might have been impacted? Well, this kind of has a couple different things. I was just thinking about this when you said that. We have a, um, a young lady, um, I'm not gonna mention her name, but a young lady who went through our B-Town Kids um, program. She was little, she was you know, uh, 10 years old, 11 years old when she started coming. And she went, we kind of walked with her. She comes from a, a pretty intense, family situation let's put it that way and not in a good way I not mean, in a good yeah, way yeah. but but pretty intense and um, just recently um, she's graduating from uh, a, a public high school here in Portland and um, she just received um, because of um, her you know I'm, I'm not gonna say that because she came to night or B-Town kids everything was that was the reason but it was a part of the reason it was a part of the the uh, journey and she just received a full ride scholarship to um, a local area. There's an organization called, um, uh, it's, it's, I think it's the Axe. I can't remember which one it is, but um, they do scholarships for urban kids. And she qualified for that and got a full ride scholarship. Wonderful. And it's really cool to see those kind of things happening in our, in our city where young people are able to connect. And we, we believe, especially with B-Town Kids, that they say if, if a child has four positive adult figures in their world, they can they can make a difference. So a difference can be made in their life. Mm -hmm. And and then stories of night strike where, you know, you see a guy who's suicidal. I mean, what, remember this a guy dumping his his pills out on the ground and saying, you know, nobody cares for me, nobody loves me. And this junior high boy bends down um, and scoops his pills out of the out of the bricks and puts him back in the pill and says, you know what, you may not love yourself, but you need to know there's a lot of people here that love you and I love you. Just those kind of things that where <laughs> here's this environment where this kind of generosity can be, can be practiced. And, um, and well, we, it, uh, I, that kind of generosity kind of feeds on itself. Yes. It? It, just, it, yeah, it grows. It does. It's like somebody with a negative attitude affects everybody around Absolutely. them, but the opposite can be true. Yeah. So what do you most need at, at, um, at Bridgetown? Do you need more volunteers? Do you need people to donate things? Do you just want people to understand what you're all about and, and, and spread the word? What, what can our viewers do for you if they happen to catch this interview? Oh, well, I think, the, I think, you know what, the number one thing is maybe this interview would make you be generous. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's not a lot to ask, if, but yes. Yeah, if you can stop every once in a while in your neighborhood and think, how can I make that place more beautiful? You know, how can I serve someone next door to me? How can I be a blessing to that person next to me over there? You know, those kind mm -hmm. of things would be, I think those are huge. And yeah, we told you, we, we need socks. We'll always need socks. Yeah. It's not something we'll ever run out of. You know, we, the bike park thing, those are great things. But if anything in this interview, you know, we have, we, we have great volunteers. We have sure. lots of stuff going on. But if anything is, man, if we would just be generous to one another and we would serve one another and we would be kind and tender hearted and forgiving to one another, I think great things could happen. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. So. Well, we're out of time. Thank you so much for sharing. I think that's a wonderful organization. It sounds like you're, you're making a difference. Well, thanks you know, for having us. Kind of that random acts of kindness yeah. kind of thing, you know, yeah. just spread it out. That's awesome. That's good. Thanks for being here, both of you. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for watching Community Hotline tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back here next week. I'm Monica Weitzel. Good night.